Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and welcome to a very special occasion of Cocktails on a Wednesday. Where they're not really making like cocktails, or actually, it depends on what you consider to be a cocktail. If you consider alcoholic like libations stacked on top of each other, then yes, we are making cocktails tonight. We're call we're going for layered shots this evening. I was attempting to figure out what to do as a recipe the other night, and I was like, you know what I haven't done? I've never done shots, but shots are boring if they're a single color. So why not make multiple colors in the same shot glass and then like see what they taste like together? I suppose. I don't know. Let's get let's get into it. Three shooters in a glass. I I'm taking inspiration from one of the books that I have... I don't think I've ever actually pulled this one out on camera. It's called The Ultimate Little Shooter Book by Ray Folly, the publisher of, in all capitals, Bartender Magazine. Uh, I'm guessing he must be experienced with bartending or uh, shooters or other alcoholic libations and whatnot. I don't know the guy personally, but uh, he's got a book full of things that you're supposed to put into a small glass and... I would suppose, take all down at once. There's also a little passage in the beginning of here, and he's plugging a product called Poppers, where like, apparently, you attach these little plastic pieces to the top of a shot glass, and when you take that shot glass and you tap it down on the table, like it, it pops, it makes a popping sound and like makes your drink all fizzy and stuff? I don't know, this book came out in, oh, let's see, when did this book come out? I think it's, I think it's rather dated. I don't know, this one is from, First printing, 1995. Copyright, 1995. This book is actually older than I am, and I for one have never heard of a popper, nor would I even know to buy one, so I'm guessing that kind of went other and uh, didn't wind up working there. It's been a very interesting week so far as we uh, like segue our way into drinks and whatnot. I decided, it's, it snowed outside. It snowed in Philadelphia over the weekend, and it was a wonderful, wonderful, you know, winter wonderland type thing going on. But I ride my bike to work, and so I thought to myself, well, I'm bigger than, you know, snow on the ground and whatnot. I can ride my bike through the snow. It shouldn't be that difficult, right? Yeah, sure, why not? So I decided to ride my bike in on Monday, and my, what a decision that was. So, newsflash, if your tires don't have tread, which my bike tires do not, I couldn't show them. My bike is actually outside right now. It's very, very, it was very, very wet when I brought it home on Monday. So it's not in my apartment right now. It just get all dirt and, like, like the dirty, mucky, like, gray snow, like, all over the ground, all over my hardwood floor, which I didn't install. I don't actually care what happens to this floor. I'm renting. Who cares? But I didn't want to, like, step on things and get my socks all wet, because if you get your socks wet, then my feet get wet, and then I'm all, like, soggy, you know, as I walk around, and that's disgusting. But I decided to bike to work on Monday, and realizing that with a small layer of snow, you're going to glide right across it. With a thick layer of snow, you're gonna like struggle as you try to go through it and there's no real way to pedal real well through that. So I struggled on my way to work, to which when I got there, my uh, co-worker who also rides the bike was like, oh, let me give you a ride home today. You shouldn't be biking through that mess and whatnot. I was like, you're right, but I have to get my bike home eventually. So I just kind of, I like biked halfway back until the roads were too, too like slushy and this, the roads, the sidewalks, and the non-existent bike lane because it just had a bunch of snow piled up into it. Until I got to like a bridge where there's a crosswalk. There's no crosswalk actually, it's a sidewalk. It's covered in snow, but it wasn't gonna work if I tried to ride my bike across that either. So I walked it and my shoes got very wet. My, uh, my boots that were too small for me, I, I returned them. I should be getting the exchange at some point and hopefully my toes will be warm and I won't feel soggy all the time as I walk to and from work. But alas, I suffered with the biking for a single day. And then, as I shared with uh, shared it with my coworkers, they were like, "Dude, take the bus." And so then I was like, "I don't really know how the bus system works. I haven't quite mastered that yet. I have mastered the subway. I know how to Uber. I know how to drive. I know how to bike. I know how to walk. But I don't know how to use the bus system. And for I mean, I don't know if it works differently anywhere else. But apparently, you just figure out what number bus you get onto. You get on the bus and you get off at your stop. It's that easy. So long as you pay the fare with your credit card or that change. I don't." I don't know what you do in COVID time. I just tap a little key card that I got that I used to use the subway with, and uh, you just get off at your stop. It's that easy. And the beneficial part of it, I don't have to get off at my stop. I can get off at any stop in between. I took the best bus back today. I was able to stop at Target and pick up some ingredients for the shooters that we were about to make. I only needed two of them. There'll be a special secret, super special shooter at the very end if you stick around. 
but you didn't hear it from me. And honestly, I wouldn't even consider it a shooter, but you'll have to find out, I suppose. But so that was fun. I'm gonna get things kicked off over here. I have three recipes prepared for the evening, as well as a super special one. So we're just gonna start, th we'll just start things off. These are all going to be layered cocktails. Layered, layered, in a layered, 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 layered. Layered is one word, not all at the same time. I think the first one I'm gonna go with, I have it, I, I went through the, basically this entire shooter book today to attempt to figure out which ones to do and I, I found a couple and I had to do a little bit of experimenting beforehand actually because like the way that layered shots work is that you have to, you have to like pay attention to the physics of it all because you don't want the, the, the all the different the ingredients to mix together you want them to sit on top of each other and if you don't put them on in the right order or you're a little too rough with them or you're not paying attention to the physics of it all like density the alcohol content how much sugar is in whatever ingredient you're putting in then you might not do it right and this book like it lists out the recipes that i have on the page but the ingredients are in i don't know whether the first ingredient is the one that goes in first or the last ingredient is the one that goes in first like is it is it typed out in the order that you're supposed to see them so you put them in backwards or uh there is no clear concise answer so i had to play around with this for a little bit so that's what i did the first one that i'm going to be making is called the second childhood i have no idea why it's called the second childhood i don't think i really need a second childhood my one childhood was pretty good at laying the foundation for the rest of my life and i was very very proud of that extremely proud of that so the second childhood is a layered shot that uses half an ounce of rumple mince peppermint schnapps or some other peppermint schnapps that you have. I don't have rumple mince. I ran out of that a while ago, actually, giving too many haircuts to my friends. Half an ounce of Jägermeister and a half an ounce of, uh, this is Fries, Fries vodka, but it doesn't have to be Fries vodka. It could be any vodka, whatever vodka floats your boat. So long as it's, uh, so long as it's the one that you need. Uh, this one doesn't particularly call for any particular type of vodka, like a potato vodka, vodka or like other types of vodkas. To be fair, I don't know of any other substance to create. I, I feel like you can make vodka from anything, but I don't know of any particular substance you, that you make uh, vodka from, aside from potatoes. But I do have potato vodka, and that's what I'm going to use. Potato vodka, because we can. So in any case, I'm going to try to set this up in a way that we can actually fully appreciate like all of the layeredness going on here. So I'm trying, I'm going to try, I'm going to try this best as I possibly can. Get a good, nice and up close view of a shot. Because you don't really, you don't really experience the majesty of the layered shot unless you can see it being layered or you can witness the bartender like very slyly messing up or attempting to fix it. Um, I tested these beforehand, but it's very possible that it is not going to be exactly how it, did, it was during the testing run. So I'm going to zoom in, try to figure out my camera angle, excuse me while I figure things out over here, get as close in as I possibly can. It's a good thing I have like that zoomy zoom camera. See, this is good. This is all right. Is that the center of the screen? That looks pretty center to me. I like that. I think I would be able to uh, absolutely appreciate a layered shot in this way. All right. So long as everybody can hear me, we're all good. But we certainly can't see anything resembling my face unless I go down like this. But we didn't come here for that. We came here for the shot. I am going to start things off with the second childhood, a layered shot with peppermint schnapps, Jägermeister, and vodka. The first thing, the first ingredient is going to be our peppermint schnapps. Mostly because the vodka is the highest proof uh, alcohol in our collection. So it's going to be the least dense, so it's going to float at the top. We want the most dense thing to be at the bottom. And apparently the schnapps is in this case. It might be actually like pretty close, the schnapps and the Jägermeister, but eh. If they're close together, then it's basically whichever one you put up first for the most part. Although, you know, your mileage may vary. Let's go with the peppermint schnapps. Peppermint schnapps, peppermint schnapps, peppermint schnapps. I also have a bar spoon on hand because it's a lot easier to layer things if you like do it slowly and whatnot. But now first I'm just gonna like, and I know it has, it has like measures and stuff on there, but I'm just gonna say each one of these is like a third and a third and a third. And it didn't really look like thirds in the increments, but that's because the, you know, the, the curvature of the glass and whatnot. Don't sue me. It's not my recipe. So about a third of an ounce, or at least as best as I can possibly do that. I could get out like my, my, my measuring thing, but I don't really wanna do that. It feels like too much effort for tonight. 
We're all about like shots are supposed to be easy. They're not supposed to be a like a, an undertaking of love unless you really love your shots. In which case, please continue loving your shots. They need to be loved too. Next, I'm gonna put some Jägermeister in there. Take a look at that little horned guy. Ha! <laughs> Don't know what that means. Apparently, it's got 56 botanicals inside of it. I, for one, have 57 botanicals in me. Although, I don't know which ones they are, and I'm sure most of them are preservatives and fake sugars. But alas, processed food. So I'm gonna do this very carefully, or attempt to, and then we should get a nice little layered effect. It's gonna look pretty cool, I think. Hopefully, very slowly. I'm actually quite nervous. I'm not that good at doing this, and I'm kinda, kinda shaking right now. But if it works, if it fits the chips, yo, there we go. If you do it slow enough and try not to go too fast, then it should work out just fine. And now, oh, yo, that looks really awesome on camera. Oh, that is so cool. I've been looking, when I was building these shots on my own, I was looking at the shot glasses stuff. No, 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 no. I should be looking at what you guys are going on here. Oh, I shouldn't have had processed food today. I shouldn't have. Did I have processed food today? Anna, you made dinner. Did I have processed foods today? I was hoping that, uh, I mean, it's okay. Actually, what did I eat for lunch? What did I have for lunch today? Mmm. I don't remember what I had for lunch. It doesn't really matter. Oh, it does really matter. I had udon noodles today, and I got made fun of. I got made fun of for my udon noodles. Apparently, the idea of cooking udon noodles in hot dog water is a bad thing. People don't like that for some reason. Well, you know, it tasted amazing. And so did my soup that came along with it. Thank you, dearest. The noodles, are they? The why? Why? I don't know. Apparently, they got a problem with things like that. Anyway, the next ingredient will be the vodka that sits up on top. This one shouldn't be too difficult. I guess the idea behind this layered shot is the fact that you'll have the good times are behind you, your adulthood is on top, and then we wind up retrograding back to our babyhood days. So I guess that's the idea of the second childhood. If this is childhood on the bottom, this is my midlife crisis, and then apparently it gets even better. Supposedly my golden years will be the best ones. Let's add that final layer of vodka up on top, carefully, so as to not screw things up. Oh. I tried to do that carefully, but I screwed things up. That's okay. I'm gonna try it a little bit, a little bit slower this time. That's the wonderful thing about, I was gonna say, that's the wonderful thing about cocktails. They're just, they're like, they're forgiving, but they're not. Liquor isn't forgiving. All right. Well, that's actually not too bad. That came out quite well. Yeah. You gotta like, there's a much, there's a much clearer layering happening between, I guess what's considered first childhood and my midlife crisis. That's cool. And it was apparently too lazy to dump the water when making the soup. That's why the hot dog water was used in there. Honestly, it tasted good. And if it tastes good, then you're doing it absolutely correctly. Mm, excuse me. This is a shot we like to call Second Childhood. I don't know why we call it Second Childhood, but I bet it, I wonder if it's as good as the first one. Maybe? I don't know, honestly. I suppose one would have to find out. It's not looking, not looking too bad, honestly. I'm gonna wind up trying these at the end. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try them when they when we get them. I'm trying to think, do I, tr do I try them at the end? Or do I try them sort of? I, I don't know. I don't know. I might as well go for it. I don't have to do the whole thing, although I could do the whole thing. If I do it now, then that means it'll get more fun as we continue going forward. Anna says do it at the end, but I feel like that's a lot. See, if you do them all at once, Anna, that's called binge drinking. If you do it over a period of time, that's not binge drinking. And we're not trying to encourage such types of activities around here. Anna's actually not here right now, otherwise she would be in the other room probably screaming at me for all this stuff. However, she is at the library right now studying like a wonderful academic. I really, I really do admire her studying prowess. I don't know if I'd want to study for that long. I'm never quite the studying type. I just like, tests usually came pretty easy for me. And if I had to study for it, then like it would mostly just kind of be like reading through my books and like coming up with things on its own. I like the way that that layers though. It's super clear on the bottom and there's kind of like a inching into the top. So I suppose... If the metaphor continues, the second child is very distinct from my midlife crisis, which is not as clear as to where it ends to become my second childhood. Maybe. Not so sure. Second childhood was made... <laughs> second childhood was brought to you in part by peppermint schnapps and Jägermeister and your locally sourced vodka, potato or otherwise. Batten down the hatches, my friends. I don't know what this is gonna taste like. The point of the, the point of doing these types of layered shots, and one at least for me, is to one see if they look cool and they're functional, and they might be, maybe, and also to see like if they taste good. And if they don't taste good, then I mean, if it looks cool, then cool. But you know, you can only get so much in the presentation. I feel. 
Oh well. It's a good thing I have a bunch of shot glasses. Let's give it a shot. Let's take it a shot. It smells alcoholic. It just kind of smells like the vodka. I don't get any of like the Jägermeister or anything from the bottom. I don't know. <clears throat> All right, so the vodka doesn't really add too much of a flavor to it. I like Jägermeister. I think it's pretty good. Excuse me, I'm reeling over that. I like Jägermeister. I think it's a little more, it's a, a little more botanical. It's got a little bit of like a licorice -y taste to it, which I personally love. There was a guy I knew back in my fraternity who every time that we would all get together and whatnot, he'd be like, yo, Jaeger time? And I was like, yes, Jaeger time. I'm a fan of Jaeger. I'm okay with that. Although <clears throat> taking it all at once could be a little bit much, but I think mostly what comes through is that mintiness at the end. The peppermint schnapps are like really, 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 really potent there. It's, it's peppermint. Of course it's gonna be there. Actually, what lingers on my tongue is the taste of the peppermint schnapps combined with like that licorice-ish, uh, lick, licorice-y? Licorice-iness? licorice of like the, the Jägermeister. If there, of the other, how many botanicals was it? Where's the Jägermeister? There were 56 botanicals in there, and I think I got one or two, you know, like licorice and fennel and whatnot. They all kind of, they kind of taste similar together. They got that licorice feel to it, or maybe wormwood. Cold macerated essence refined in oak. I, I could be refined in oak. Cold ma cold macerated essence? How did you get to that point? What is the essence and how did you macerate it? So I'm unsure. In any case, things are going well for now. The coolness of the shot glass has reminded me of the coldness on the way into work. I had mentioned before that when I went to work on Monday and expressed to my coworkers about the joys of biking through the snow and slipping around a bunch, he was like, no, 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 let me drive you home. You don't have to, don't, have, don't like drive home in this. Like, don't, don't do your bike ride. And I was like, no, 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 it's okay. I gotta bring my bike back eventually. Don't worry about it, but I thank you for the offer. And then I found out today that he actually rode his own bike into work today. And he was like, Cameron, how did you do that? How do you bike through the snow like that? Carefully and not steadily. I was not able to do that all in well, one fell swoop. I like, the first thing that I did after I got out of my apartment is I drew, like, I biked ride right into a snowbank and was like, can I, can I ride through this? Like, if I pedal hard enough, will I be able to get through this? The answer is no. You will not be able to get through that snowbank, depending on what type of snow it is. I mean, I guess if it's ice and stuff, then maybe you'll be able to get some traction on it and whatnot, but so far, things haven't iced over too badly. I was able to bike ride over ice better than I could bike ride through snow, so it actually kind of worked out for me. But uh, as I mentioned before, the bike is outside because he was a bad, bad bike, bad bicycle. So he's not inside right now, and I've been taking the bus. That's all fine. The next shooter that I'm going to go through and try is... Is... We already did second childhood. I don't need another one. I'm going to do a third childhood. I'm going to do... The, uh, let's do Test Tube Baby. I like the Test Tube Baby. That seems a little odd. The, the, the name, to me, made it think that I was going to put something into it. Like, what is so babyful about a Test Food Baby, Test Food, Test Food, <laughs> Test Tube Baby, uh, cocktail, cocktail, layered, shoot, er, and stuff. I'm running out of words today. I'm not doing so well here. Maybe it's because I took a shot. It's too early. I had a very big dinner for this, so I think we'll be, I think we'll be okay. But hey, today in Graveyard Keeper, I plan on making beer, so it seems only appropriate. The test tube, baby, is made with two thirds of an ounce of strawberry schnapps. I happen to have, I happen to have raspberry schnapps here, sweet and sour raspberry schnapps. I don't think it really changes the flavor much. Depends on your third ingredient. The second ingredient is one part of Irish cream. I, I'm not using Irish cream. I don't have any Irish cream, so I'm just gonna use half and half. I bought at the store like an hour ago and it worked. I tested it, it works, so it should work again. And then a small gummy bear, which happens to be our baby in this case. When you have a test tube baby, there's going to be a baby inside the test tube. Now, usually too, according to this book, you're supposed to build this in a test tube, but I don't happen to have any test tubes on me. All I have are shot glasses. You're gonna have to meet me halfway on this one. Unless, unless I could, I, I, I never did any like chemistry classes in one of college, so I didn't even have the opportunity to go into a chemistry lab and be like, yoink, this one's mine now as a, as a, as a souvenir of my college days. But yeah, let's get right into it. The test tube baby. I'm gonna try to zoom back in over here so we can get the full frontal effect of God, whatever, whatever this looks like next. I know what it looks like. You don't know what it looks like just yet, but I guarantee it's gonna be beautiful. 
Also, I apologize for the stuttering of the camera there. I'm like, I'm moving, it's an IR. Actually, can you see the IR because it's a camera? If you look at your phone, if you take an interesting tidbit of, tidbit of information, if you take your phone camera and point this at your phone camera, usually you can see the infrared light, light turn up as like a purpley color. I don't think, I don't think this camera picks that up though. Does it look like it's blinking? It is kind of blinking, is it kind of blinking? Blinky, blinky, blinky. Focus, I say. Fo 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 focus on me? Focus. Focus, I say. All right, that's fine. That's fine. You don't want to work with me? That's okay. We're just going to move on. Then. We're going to take a shot because you don't want to work with me, silly camera. The test tube, baby. We'll start off with our uh, two-part strawberry schnapps, which I suppose would be the things on the bottom. Again, I don't know exactly what order they're supposed to go in. That's the wrong one. Wait, test tube, baby. There we go. Oh, that's actually, that's a good idea. I could put it up against the camera like that. That's great. I don't know exactly what order it's supposed to go in, but I think I got a feeling the Irish cream don't go up on top or whatever cream that you've got. So let's get them. Two parts of whatever whatever schnapps you got on hand. I've got a I've got the quaper pucker raspberry, which I didn't think was schnapps, but it says sweet and sour schnapps. So I'm gonna have to take the word of the manufacturer this time. Don't argue with me. Argue with the Cooper since 1695. Seems like some of those numbers are reversed. I don't know if they've been around for that long. But then again, I only have my limited knowledge of like American history and stuff, and we've only been around for like what, a few, couple hundred years now? I don't know. I'd call that two measures of schnapps and stuff. I'm gonna put stuff on top. Actually, I'm gonna go a little bit more because the effect we're going for here is like a breaching through. Breaching through what? I don't know, one of the layers. Breaching through all the layers. This is like in these drinks. These shots here, these shooters are like onions. They got layers. That's what they've got, layers. Excuse me. And now I'm gonna put some cream up on top. You don't need to shake your cream. But if you wanna feel so inclined to, you may. I picked this up from Target about an hour ago, a little half and half stuff, and it literally smells like it walked right off the farm. This smells like, this smells like I was walking through a farm, found a hay patch, that was definitely near some cows and like reached in and was just like, yes, this will be my cream for the episode. It's, it smells terrible. And the whole, and the whole refrigerator that I pulled it out of also smelled that bad. It was a little uncomfortable, uh, discomforting, I'll admit that, but it's what I have and it's, there are no others. So that's just, you gotta deal with that. I was actually surprised to find that the cream floats in the way that it does, because to my knowledge, something like cream is a lot more dense than the liquor that comes below it. But as it turns out, it's really not. Apparently, according to the physics of which I'm seeing here, the cream is less dense than the liquor, the liqueur that is right below it, which honestly shocked me. That little clinking sound is me just cleaning off my bar spoon and whatnot. So if that is, if that is bothering to you, I'm sorry, it's over. And some would say, it must be it, right? No. This is my test tube. This is my solution. This is, uh, I, I guess, I don't know, blood. This is the other part of the reproduction process that would produce a baby. And the other part is our baby. Now I got a couple, I got a couple of little gummy bears. I got a couple of them. I don't know how long these have been in my closet for, but I was like, damn, I really wish we had some gummy bears. And I was like, take a look up near the, uh, the candy and whatnot. I bet we have some. And lo and behold, we had two entire packs of gummy bears. I was like, what? No way. So I have a couple of different colors in here. And I think I'm going to go with the pink one because it is the most obvious one in there. Actually, I'm going to go with the one of the darker colored ones. Cause I feel like, I feel like this guy contrasts more with the, with the glass in the back. I don't know. Maybe we'll put a couple of babies in there. Maybe. How many, te how many babies can you have in one test tube? I'm not sure. Anyway, here comes a test tube baby. This guy's going to try to go for a little swim. Uh, I don't know if I want to like drop it in there or like birth is a heavy process, right? Maybe if I just like carefully, like maybe he'll float. Nope. All right. He at the bottom. That's a little, it's a little freaky looking. It's whoa. It's so weird. It's like, it's coming off of the gummy bear. It's almost as if like the white liquid in the solution, the cream is like rising up towards the top to attempt to, to attempt to breach its way out of what I assume, like if, if this is test tube baby, then, or this is the test tube, I'm gonna say it's, it's the womb, but this is in the test tube, so like, it's not exactly, it's not a good analog to the human body. You know what? Just because we can, and it feels like a good day, let's just say we have twins. Twinsies. Now there's two babies in the test tube. 
and wow, I must have measured that out perfectly because that is like right up to the top there. Definitely was not expecting that one. But alas, this is my mighty creation! The test tube baby! Or rather test tube babies. I'm gonna call this the test tube twins, which the, with the alliteration makes me think that that's a pretty damn good drink. Alliteration, actually it's consonants. It's not alliteration in this case, it's consonants. Alliteration is a bunch of vowels like A, E, I, O, U, or a bunch of A's after each other like Aardvark's eight apples after appetizing. That's alliteration. But consonants would be like test tube twins titulate tabularly. Anyway, so I don't know, it's just, it, the idea is to take a shot of that. Uh, I don't know if the gummy bears are gonna go in there in one piece. I might be chewing for a little while. This was Test Tube Baby, Test Tube Twins. It's two measures of your favorite schnapps. It could be strawberry, according to the manufacturer's guidance, or it could be pucker, sweet and sour raspberry, if it so strikes you. Um, I just wanted to go for something that was red. I assume the strawberry schnapps is red, so I picked another red one that I had. That's my, that's my creator's bias behind it. And then you can put Irish cream on top, or you can put you can put regular cream up on top. You could probably use heavy. I was actually trying to decide, like, do I use heavy cream or do I use half and half? I don't usually use half and half because I imagine the heavy cream is a lot denser. But apparently, if you use something other than heavy cream, like the half and half, for instance, you don't necessarily have the heavy cream always sink to the bottom. So actually, kind of worked out in my favor. Anyway, as they say in parts of the world, lachaim. You're having twins, one is a boy, and the other one doesn't choose to identify. It does not have any higher level of thinking right now. It was literally just born. Literally just synthesized? I guess test tube babies are synthesized. They're created, they're not born. Oh, I'm spilling things. Actually, that's delicious. That's delightful, that's like, Delightfully sickeningly sweet. My goodness. It kind of tastes like like strawberries and cream. It tastes like raspberry and cream. It was really good. I'm not usually a big fan of half and half. My youngest brother really is though. He like he is totally into taking the little like half and half containers at the restaurant and just like slurping those bad boys down. It's actually quite impressive. I've like I've never been a big fan of the taste of half and half because it seems it always seemed a little too like buttery to me and I, I didn't really like that but it serves a purpose and in this case it was pretty good that was really appetizing it was a good one i'll give that a plus and plus i'm continuing to enjoy, enjoy munching on the babies my twins are being consumed which is good for me not good for my babies not good for my family i'm sure fiance would be very angry at me if i ate my babies if I ate our babies, I'm not babies yet. Maybe one day, I will certainly not be consuming them. So that feels like bad parenting. That was really difficult to get through these gummy bears. These gummy bears came from Whole Foods? 365 Whole Foods Market? Assorted flavors? I don't know what flavors there are. I honestly can't tell what flavors I got, to be perfectly honest. But um, you just throw them in a cool, dry place. The first ingredient is tapioca syrup, which kind of explains why it's a little light. It's got that, it's got that sticking around your teeth. It's got that sticking around your teeth texture to it. Which, like, some people are totally into. I, I do not like the feeling of things stuck on my teeth. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't like it. But, if it tastes good, who am I to complain? Yo! What's going on? I just ate two babies. Incredible! And I feel absolutely no shame. I'm officially a child murderer. If those childs are considered gummy bears, which they were. They were gummy bears, and that's okay. That's okay with me. I think it's time for me to bitch about packages. Long story short, I had uh, Anna. <laughs> Anna, we ordered. Um, we ordered a laptop for Anna, and my God, my God, FedEx is filled with a bunch of dumbasses. I think somehow my package was was supposed to come in on Wednesday. Wound up, they wound up missing my door three or four times in a row. There was no note left behind. I just kept getting text messages just like, yeah, there was nobody there to pick up your package or sign for it. Like, of course not. I work a job. I can't be home to sign your freaking package. Why do I have to sign it anyway? Long story short, I waited all day, 
all day on Saturday. They were like, oh, we're gonna order, we're gonna deliver your package on Saturday. Can you make sure to be home to sign for it? Yeah, I was home all day on Saturday. I didn't do anything on Saturday because my one thing that I was supposed to do was wait for that damn package. The damn package never came. Eight o'clock came around and I, I called them up. I was like, yo, um, is my is my package coming today? Because the your website and your app says that it might not be. And they're like, no, it's probably not gonna come today. So I'm like, okay, that's fair. That's fine. You don't want to deliver it to my apartment? That's okay. Can you deliver it to my work establishment? I will be there eight hours a day. There's even a FedEx place down the road. It was FedEx, by the way. I feel like that might explain a lot of these issues. And they were like, the guy was like, nah, sorry, we can't do that. You're gonna have to contact the seller. Like, dude, I bought this on Amazon. I'm not contacting the seller. You have my package. Why don't you just be like, okay, I'm gonna take this package, which I currently have, and deliver it over here. Apparently they couldn't do that. Dude, Astro, I am also salty. I'm very, I mean, I'm not as salty as I was when Tuesday came around and I got a text message saying, sorry, your package will be delivered on Wednesday. And I was like, okay, fine. It'll be delivered on Wednesday. That's okay. I can wait. And not even 15 minutes later, I got another pack. I got another message that said, just kidding. You can go pick up your package right now. And I was like, could you like stop being so paradoxical FedEx, please? And it was actually very easy to, to go pick up my package. It wasn't too bad at all. So uh, Anna now has a new laptop. Hopefully it works better than the new laptop we got for her previously. The old laptop sucks. The new laptop sucked. And now we have the new, new laptop. And hopefully that'll be good. And I can't wait to be getting that refund. I don't know how often refunds like that take. Crossing my fingers. I am the killer. What was that message about me being the killer? I am the killer. I killed the babies. I put them in my mouth. And I consumed them. New, new laptop. Better than the old, old laptop. Actually, I think I think the old, old laptop that Anna had once upon a time was stepped on by her younger sister. Potentially. I don't know. Those were dark times. The next shooter that we're going to get into is another layered one. They're all, they've all been layered ones. Layered. It's difficult for me. I don't know. Maybe it's my accent or something, but I can't easily say layered with two syllables. I'm too inclined to be like layered. Leered. Leered cocktail. Oh, gosh. Well, so long as those kids aren't boneless and white, is all I'm saying, then well, I guess we're all good. Well, luckily, they were bone- they were boneless, but there are assorted colors, including, but not limited to, um, pink- oh, actually, let's- let's do the- let's do the- let's do the zoom in. We'll zoom in on the shot glass and we'll show off- We'll show off all your different possible baby combination. It's not just boy or girl anymore, ladies, gentlemen, and those in between. It's not just blonde hair or brunette. It's entirely different species to begin with. Take that shot out of there. We have pink baby. Oh, are you gonna focus on that? You wanna focus on that camera? Focus, focus on the camera. Focus, 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 focus. There we go. We've got pink baby. Red hair is also an option. We've got purplish baby. Stop focusing on my face, you silly camera. What if I like hang around here? Yeah, that'll that'll try to work that way. We've got red baby. Yo, look, red skinned baby. Red baby. And honestly, that might be all the colors. I think that's no, that's that's it. There's only there's only three different baby. There's only three different types of babies. Um this one's hot-headedness flavor, personality-wise. This one is, I'm an angel as a child, but I'm gonna be one hell of a teenager flavor. And this one is, um, the one that you weren't expecting flavor. Dude, you could totally do a stop motion with that setup. Dude! I'm gonna have a little, a little, a little family over here. Oh, stop focusing on my, stop focusing on my shirt! That's not the important thing here! Silly camera, this is the important thing! Look at the family! They're so damn happy together! Purple is unrepressed. Unrepressed sexual energy. Astro, these are children. Watch yourself. Anyway, let's focus on the shot glass. Focus on the shot glass. No more children. We have alcohol on screen. No children. No children allowed. If you're a child, don't drink alcohol unless you're the majority in your jurisdiction. Excuse me. I'm still burping from the other shots I've taken so far. My next recipe here is going to be the American flag. Although, let's just say that it's literally any flag that has the colors red, white, and blue in them. And this one actually took quite a bit of effort. I've made this before, but the, the instructions that they give here, I just, I don't have 
I don't have the right ingredients to be able to do it the way that they tell me to. I don't know. Union Jack? Union Jack? Yukon Jack? I don't know. The Union is an American flag. This particular recipe calls for blue curacao, which I have, cream, which I kind of have, and grenadine, which I am not using. The problem with this particular combination is, they give it. They, let's think about this physically for a moment. The blue curacao is going to have quite a bit of sugar in it, so it's probably going to float to the bottom compared to the cream if you use like a cream liqueur, which because it has a higher ABV is going to be focused, it's going to kind of float more on top. The grenadine, because it's literally just syrup, is going to float to the bottom. So you're going to have your grenadine and your curacao kind of fighting for their place on the bottom. So I've kind of changed up this recipe. It's probably not going to taste good, but it's going to work the way that I want it to. So to do so, we're going to do things in equal parts as we've been doing. Union Jack is the British, fl British flag. We could also do rum chata. I don't have any rum chata, unfortunately. So I'm going to use praline liqueur. But but we're not there yet. We have to We have to do this first. My first ingredient will be blue curacao. It's blue. You've seen them before. Not that shitty ass syrup stuff. No, this is the real deal, baby. I'm going to try to do what a tenth as best as we can. About a third of the glass of this. You can tell the rim of my blue curacao container is very, very crusty. It's a crusty kind of day. All right. I'd say that's three, like a third-ish. Whoops. I dropped my cap on the floor. Excuse me for one moment. Anyway, I'm back now. The next ingredient is to put on. We're gonna put on. Uh, we're gonna put on some cream. Usually, it would call for the cream. I don't really feel like using the cream that currently smells like a barn because it smells like a barn. So I'm gonna use something that I think will make it taste a little bit better, which is this pralines and cream liqueur, which I haven't used on stream before. I don't think. This is this is a particular liquor that like the the particular brand Evangelines. Is that gonna show up? Evangelines. If y'all are trying this, in one of my books. I found a, something that called for praline liqueur, and praline is like this, like, like, uh, I want to say it's pecan, like a p sugary pecan sweet cookie cake, the cookie thing, and it's delicious, it like melts in your mouth, it's a little chocolate, it's, it's, it's amazing, but so, one of the recipes called for praline liqueur, and I searched all over the place to try to find this praline liqueur, and the only place that I could find it was down south in the state of South Carolina. Luckily, I have friends who live in South Carolina now, so whenever they come up to visit or I go down to visit them, I'm able to restock. Anyway, that's not this liqueur. It's actually the regular praline liqueur. This is just the pralines and cream version of it, which it's all right. It's pretty good. Astra hasn't seen it, so... Well, actually, that's probably not really surprising to me. Me being in, like, the mid... Like, the mid-coastal area, I'm not surprised that somebody else doesn't recognize that. But, you know, couldn't you just have it shipped... There is weirdness with shipping liquors into Pennsylvania. The the whole like distribution system over here is a little confusing, so it doesn't work out the way that we want it to, and it's very difficult to actually get things shipped. There's a website that advertises being the ship pretty much everywhere everywhere, and they don't ship to my apartment. It makes me very sad. Anyway, let's layer this. Oh, trying to. Very, very slowly. Very, very slowly. I'm gonna let that slip down a little bit. See? With the particular praline, with the particular liqueur I have here, it's not super white. Like, it's not as white as it could be, but it's like, it's like pretty white. It's like a, like an off-white. Let's call it like an eggshell, perhaps. Alright, I think that's about another third in there. It's a little tarnished with the blue, so I apologize. But, it's the best that we got for what we have. If actually, if I just turn like, if I just turn this around. Just a little bit. There we go. Now it's perfect. I'm okay with that. This looks beautiful. Oh, it gets even better. Except it actually doesn't. Because the final ingredient here, originally it called for like a red-based liqueur with sugar in it. So because it has sugar in it and it's low in alcohol, it's probably gonna wind up fighting in, with, in place with these ones. So instead what we need is something that doesn't have sugar, that has a relatively high ABV, and the closest thing I have to that is Campari, a bitter liqueur. It's a little sweet, it's got some sugar in it, but it's, it's um, let's see, it's um, it's 24% alcohol, so it's 48%, uh, 48 proof, as opposed to like 30 proof. Pretty sure I just made the French flag, what? Well, but we're red, white, and blue. I don't know, dog. I don't know if I can get very American with the fact that I can't make stars and whatnot in this. Or maybe... 
Maybe it was supposed to be mixed. I don't know. I ain't complaining. I don't know whose flag it is. But it's red, white, and blue. Or like red cashew milk and blue. Like electric blue. Let's put the rest of that up on top. I got Campari. Campari. It's a bitter liqueur. We've got the smoothness of pralines and cream. We've got the orange of blue curacao. And we've got the bitterness of Campari. What a combo. What a combo. There we go. It's kind of blending a little bit on the top. I could add Pop Rocks. This is true. I could add white Pop Rocks, except for the fact that I don't have any more Pop Rocks. Makes me sad. That's all I, this, this is all I got. I could add, I could add babies though. Where the babies at? Yo, babies. Have some pride in your country. I don't know what country you're from, but this will be, this is your mantra. There we go. Let's have repressed sexual energy kind of stray out from the crowd a little bit. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So are the chillin. They're just, they're just saying. Well, they're not saying warriors, but oh, sorry, little guy. Let me push you over here. It's a beautiful little, it's a beautiful little family portrait. Gotta love that. Love the way that that looks. Mmm. Tasty. All right. Well, that was beautiful. Beautiful in a rather patriotic way. I'm sure if I kind of shook that up a little bit, they kind of all get to know each other. Now, if I dropped, if I dropped a little gummy bear in this right now, it's going to completely ruin the whole like layered effect and whatnot. But honestly, mm, do we want to see that happen? Do we want to? It's not going to taste any different. It's not going to taste any different for me. I want to just, I want to poke it with my spoon. That's what I'll do. This is what happens when you break the layering effect. Pop. Actually, that really didn't do much. Honestly? Wow. The density actually uh, is on my side this time. That really didn't do much at all. Nice. Do you think the Saiyans would beat a, uh, a Viltrumite one-on-one? -on -one? Absolutely. We can go Super Saiyan. I think the Super Saiyans always got this one. Dude, if Goku can do it, then I guess, I guess any Sa Super Saiyan is pretty much capable on that. I don't, I don't know. I guess that, that, that's technically not true. But if it was Goku, absolutely. I think so. I don't think, I don't think, uh, what, what was his name? Omni-Man. I don't think Omni-Man's got anything on Goku. Cause like, Goku will be like, at the very least, like, Omni-Man's gonna be like, Ugh! Fight, fight, fight! I hate you, my son! And then Goku's gonna be like, eh, I was just having fun anyway. So I'd be on his side no matter what, cause he's just a positive person. I like Goku. I mean, the regular Saiyans. Oh, no. I think, I think, if I had to be perfectly honest, I think regular Saiyans that haven't trained as much as like Vegeta and Goku would probably get their asses kicked by Omni Man, and and probably also our uh, our invincible you know as well. So we made an American flag. Let's just say we made a red, white, and blue flag, and it had Campari on top, pralines and cream liqueur in the middle, and blue curacao on the bottom. How does it look? All right, not too bad. How does it taste? I don't think it's gonna be very good. It smells like bitter Campari. Campari is supposedly like a bitter orange liqueur. I've never had an orange so bitter to compare it to, although it is bitter. It's a little sweet. The pralines and cream kind of tastes like cream and nut, like nut, like hazelnut or uh, pecan, pecan specifically. And the curacao is like orange flavor, sort of, kind of, not really. I don't know. Anyway, let's go for it. Lachayim, so they say. Gazukov? Um, pros it? Um, kanpai! That's the Japanese way of saying it, I believe. No. Okay, well I say no, but there's actually, there's actually some depth there. In that particular shot. The Campari holds through. It's bitter. It's still bitter, and it remains bitter. But the next thing that happens is that pralines and cream also sticks around. So like the current aftertaste is as if I bit into like like a dandelion or something. The only reason I know that is because I've bitten into a dandelion before. This is not new. I have bitten into dandelions and they are very bitter. It's that bitterness that combines with the sweetness, like the, the, the yummy yummy sweetness of the pralines and cream. And honestly, I don't think it's that bad. If you're the kind of person who like, you're okay with the bitterness, but you also are okay with a little bit of sweetness here and there, this shot is totally palatable. The, the, uh, the red, white, and blue, the, which I will not call an American flag, because I don't think it seemed very American to me, but it was, 
was good. Honestly, I don't taste too much of the Curacao in there. Curacao tends to get lost on me, but it was blue. It was pretty looking and it, it helped to, you know, continue to build up the image. So I don't think anybody's complaining there. So that was nice. That wasn't too bad. Usually I don't drink so much at once. So naturally what you do anytime you're drinking stuff like that is you make sure you have a big dinner beforehand and I made a wonderful rice combination. It was beautiful. I ate an entire plate of that stuff. And you also got to keep up on your water, which I haven't taken a drink of in a little bit. I'm just going to kind of, I'm just going to kind of go down the bottle. You're supposed to take sips every once in a while, but if I can rock through this, usually, I don't know, I don't know if there are any particular like hangover cures out there that is anybody's favorite, but my favorite hangover cure is waking up at four in the morning or sometime before my body would normally wake up and chug an entire bottle of water. I don't think that is the most healthy way to do it. Certainly isn't the best way to do it because you don't want to put too much water in your body at once. Your cells will literally explode. So be careful about that. But that tends to help me out in the morning. Two ounces every two minutes. Oof. When Astro drinks, you don't eat. Of water, Anna says. She definitely eat. I mean, depends. I mean, it depends on what you're doing. I ain't your parents, so I'm not telling what you should do. However, if you're trying not to get drunk, eat some food, drink some water, you pace yourself. If you're trying to get drunk, um, I suppose this is how you would do it. Short amount of time, empty, excuse me, empty stomach, and not a lot of fluids. But I think the, the whole lack of fluids kind of plays into the hangover part more so than others. But Astro's got a super high tolerance. You don't want to spend tons of money. I feel that. I don't like, I, I, I like to go around telling people that I have a rather high tolerance, but it kind of just sounds like I'm putting on airs and whatnot. Depending on what I eat, I can be very easily tipsified, or very not so easily tipsified. If I ate like literally nothing but bread before this stream, and I did so like an hour ago, which I did, then I should be okay. And I feel okay so far, but that could change. The body has a way of doing things. My particular metabolism is not as predictable as some other people's might be. I don't know. In any case, that's what I got going on there. I had three different combinations of shots today, of layered shots today. We made three special recipes. One was the second childhood, which kind of had like a transparent darkness and transparent effect to it. Then we made, oh, what else did we do? Then we made the test tube baby, which is red on the bottom and white on top, and you drop a little sucker into it. A sucker, like a, like a gummy bear and whatnot. And then the other one, the American flag. That's what this book calls it. Didn't really look like an American flag, but it had some red, sort of white and blue in there. Astro says he plans on moving back to Wisconsin in June and July, and you'll be drinking at home a bit more often. Hey, you know, if you're comfortable, if you're in a place where you're comfortable, I think that's the perfect place to, you know, imbibe, ingest, just let your, you know, give into your vices. If you have to give into your vices in a particular location, you might as well give in in the comfort of your home, nice and relaxed. I tend to do my drinking mostly right here in front of the camera in the comfort of what I'm calling my living room. So I'm very comfortable right now and starting to feel a little bit warm, but I like that. I'm cool with it. But I'm not quite done yet. I have found another, th this whole, this particular shooter book, my, most of my books, every once in a while have like, not my books, I didn't write this book, but most of them tend to have like joke recipes in them. And I found a joke recipe in this shooter book and it advertises itself as a built layered shooter. And I'm like, I had, I had to go for this. I'm not gonna say the recipe, you're gonna guess the recipe as I build it before your very eyes. I am gonna grab an additional shot glass. I have many. What else we got going on here? Astor says his parents got a lot more relaxed with the with your substances of choice. Hey, you know. And if people surround you, you know, if they support you and whatnot, that's cool too. My mother was always the kind of person to just like, you want to try something? You're more than welcome to try it with me. And I was like, yeah, I like that. Thank you, mom. I appreciate you. She's 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 wonderful. She is a lovely, lovely person. The next layered shot that we have is going to require only two ingredients. Technically only one ingredient. The first ingredient is, can you guess? I'm gonna do a quick flyby. This is the one ingredient that goes in first. And we're gonna apply a single shot's worth of that to our layered shot. We're gonna pour it carefully, slowly, slowly, just up to the brim. Little bit, we're almost there, almost there, almost there. Okay, okay, okay. That was good. 
Astra says that they want their parents want you to live with them again. That's nice. I I love I, I loved living with my parents while I could, but I got my own space now, so I'm gonna stay over here. So that's ingredient number one. Can you guess what it is? I'll reveal it at the end. Don't worry. And the next ingredient is no ingredient. It's it's our garnish. And I need to open our garnish because I haven't opened it yet. I also just bought this right before stream. For my garnish, I am going to require opening up this container. It's not letting me open it up. Are you kidding me? Why won't you open up, you silly container? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm kind of trying to prime my fingers in here. I didn't open this up beforehand. Probably should have. All right, all right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Here we go. There we go. The next ingredient is your garnish. Can you, can you guess what it is? Oh, 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 those ones are stacked on top of each other. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful. What a beautiful layering effect we have going on right here. You can actually see that the one layer is distinct from the layer above it. There doesn't seem to be a lot of mixing going on here. That's incredible. Wow. Quite the layering effect we have going on here. Wow. That's beautiful. Ladies, gentlemen, those who fall in between or far flung, may I present to you the layered shooter. There we go. Meat and potatoes. It is literally an ounce, one and a half ounces of potato vodka. This is potato vodka. It's Skunktown potato vodka from my hometown. Fill it up and garnish it with a hefty set of slices of pepperoni. This is apparently the final shot. Somehow my book actually had a recipe for literally vodka and pepperoni. It's just pepperoni on top of a shot glass. Somehow this is considered a drink. This made it into a book that I don't know how popular this was back in 1995, but this is because it was so, this is a retro cocktail, a retro layered shot glass with pepperoni on top of it. I'm like, I'm like freaking out. Astro says he loves me. I love you too. And myself, I love many people. Hate is such a strong word, so I go the opposite. So you got some things you gotta handle. So hope the rest of the stream goes good. I'm sure it will. I have a couple of drinks in my system this time. Haven't done a stream like that in a hot minute. I hope you're not as wonderful, sir. And I hope that whatever business you have to take care of is manageable and isn't too, too hard on the psyche. I, for one, will now do a very candid review of meat and potatoes. It is vodka. It is pepperoni. So, I mean, like, I guess what comes next is you take a shot of the meat and potatoes. Potato being the vodka and the meat being what kind of floats on top. I'm kind of like, I'm more flabbergasted by the fact that this particular recipe was in a book that is meant to be like, like from the publisher of Bartender Magazine in 1995, like Mr. Ray Foley, 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 you really pride yourself on this particular recipe? You, you chose to include this in your book. So I suppose it must be pretty damn good or popular. I don't know. Let's go for it. I don't know whether to take the whole thing at once. Oh, you know what? We've been taking the whole things at once. That's what we're going to go with. The final secret recipe. The final secret layered shooter recipe. Potato vodka and pepperoni. Uh, Zuchov. I literally can't do that. I can't fit that in my mouth. Can I? I really can't do that. I'm struggling with how to actually do this. Maybe I like... Nope, that's spilling everywhere. Oh my goodness! I'm trying to figure out the best way to go about doing this. I'm gonna eat the, I'm gonna eat the garnish, the, the pepperoni. And then I will take the shot. Wow, I'm spilling everywhere. That's unfortunate. You know what? I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna take that. Oh my goodness. Even with just a little bit of the vodka on the pepperoni, it's not good. I'm not gonna do that actually. Just kidding. Well, the pepperoni though. But the pepperoni and the vodka do not go well together. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. No payoff there. If you really want to try this for yourself at home, you're more than welcome to put potato vodka in a shot glass and throw pepperoni on it. I've had quite a few shots this time around. Just, just imagine walking up to your favorite bar and being, I'll have, saying like, I'll have a meat and potatoes, please. 
And when their bartender is just like, bro, what have you been smoking? What have you been drinking tonight? They'd be like, I would just like a shot of vodka with some slices of pepperoni. You got pepperoni in back there, Mr. Bartender? Do you? Because if you do, we want pepperoni on top of vodka. It's ridiculous. Anyway, that was four shooter recipes for everybody. I hope everyone had a good time. If you learned something, that's a great thing. We must continue to learn in our lives because that's how it should be. I appreciate everyone very much. We're going to move on to the game now, but I very much appreciate everybody coming around for what I did. We had four, three layered shooter recipes and then a secret one at the end. It's lovely. And pepperoni, of all things. We're not sponsored by salami today or any type of uh, cured meat. Is that what we got? All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your night. If you're sticking around for the graveyard, then that's perfect. The graveyard shift is upon us. I'm making beer tonight. Apparently, that's what you gotta do. The Inquisitors, the people who burn witches, want beer, so we will give them beer. This is how it'll be. Until I see y'all on the other side, enjoy the parrots in the meantime. We always appreciate it. So long, everybody. Peace out. too.